As a director of software engineering, I've conducted hundreds of interviews for various technical positions, and I built up a team of over 20 people, some of whom did not have previous experience or a computer science degree. I've worked with many engineering leaders and executives, so I have a pretty good grasp on what hiring managers are really looking for, and it might not be what you expect. Now, I'm not saying this is gonna be easy, it's not. But what I do wanna do is present you with some unique strategies that I've seen work that can really help you stand out against other job seekers and actually get a job in tech. So the first secret is finding the right company to apply for. Now, when a lot of people think tech, they think of the big tech companies like Fang or Mango or whatever it's called at this point. You know what I'm talking about, Google, Amazon, those big companies, right? Now. I know that the pay at those companies is good, but I don't think it's actually the best option for a lot of people in the current market. You'll see where I'm going with this in a second because I think choosing the right sort of company is not only gonna make all of the other tips that I give you a lot easier to implement, but it's also going to result in a more satisfying working experience once you actually have the job. Jobs at big tech companies are designed in a way to make the people working in them replaceable and to take you down a well-worn path that's gonna be predictable for the company. You're gonna be assigned specific tasks and you're not gonna have the room for creativity creativity that you need to really show off what you're capable of. And that's absolutely not the position you want to find yourself in constrained by all of these processes at a big tech company. You want to be able to use the latest technologies and leverage them in a way to really boost your career and the impact that you're making at whatever company you're working for. And it might seem more secure to work at a big tech company, but I think that's an illusion because we are in a time of great change and this is the kind of environment where little startups are able to actually take on and disrupt big industries and become the big players themselves. If you want to learn more about this, check out the book, The Innovator's Dilemma. So what do I recommend doing instead of working at big tech? I suggest that people work at startups or companies that aren't even particularly focused in tech. Because in these roles, you're gonna have a much easier time making a difference and using the latest technologies as they actually come out. It's much easier to make an outsized impact and really move the needle at a smaller company. And as a bonus, you're not gonna have to go through the same stringent seven round interview with a bunch of leak code questions. These companies are gonna care a lot more about what you can actually build and how you work rather than focusing on whether you have all of your sorting algorithms memorized. Now, before we keep going, I do wanna address the elephant in the room, which is AI. Is AI going to automate all of these technical roles and leave you out of a job? I really don't think so. And that's because if you look at the trend of technology over the last 40 years, you'll notice that we've had many innovations that have dramatically accelerated and improved the efficiency of building software. Nonetheless, we have never had a higher demand for software engineers. And I think the same thing is happening with AI. Don't get me wrong. I do believe that AI is going to automate a lot of the current work that we do. And I already use it every day to write code and go much faster than I was before. In the future with AI agents, we might not even have to to write code in the same way we do now, but we will still need to identify problems, figure out the best solutions for them, and guide the AI in the right direction. And I think the software engineers of today are really well equipped to be in that sort of position, whether that's called a software engineer in the future or a product manager or whatever it may be. At the end of the day, it's still a job in tech that's helping to solve real world problems by creating software. Okay, so let's say you wanna focus on applying to these various companies. So how do you go about actually doing that? I see a lot of people just sending their resume to every job application they can find and never looking back. And if they get a call, they're happy about it, they'll take the interview and move on. But I think this is actually one of the worst ways in which you can apply for jobs because you're not really standing out from all of the other candidates that are doing the same thing. You're not showing the companies that you should be the candidate that actually gets the job. As a hiring manager, what I've seen work well is when people actually put in the effort to show that they're going to be a good fit for the company, that they are actually being proactive and thinking about what the needs of the company are and whether they're willing to put in the effort to learn. And you might think that this sounds self-centered and it's true because the company is looking out for itself. So it's looking for people who are gonna put in the effort and make that connection with the company. So when I see people going above and beyond and learning about the company and the sort of issues that we have and focusing on how their skills can actually help us, that gives me a really good signal that's gonna give you an unfair advantage by the time that we're making a decision on who to hire. Additionally, if you were actually referred to the company or if you directly reached out to the hiring manager, 
that is also a huge advantage because that just puts you at the front of the line that puts you at the top of everybody's mind. It's the people that show initiative and creativity that are often the people that these smaller companies actually want. I would actually recommend that people don't just directly apply to a job listing, but actually find the hiring manager or the recruiter, reach out to them, ask about the role, get an understanding of the company, maybe figure out a way to network with other engineers or product managers at the company, learn more and then get a referral and come in super well prepared. By engaging in all of this direct communication, you're gonna really stand out from all the candidates that just submit their resume and look away. Also, don't be afraid to tap into your network. And you do have a network, whether it seems like it or not, because you have some family, you have friends, maybe you just know somebody at the local grocery store. In the modern day and age, you're not that many connections removed from somebody that needs some technical work done, and people are much more likely to work with somebody that's referred to them than a total stranger. So definitely spend some time building your network and do it in a genuine way where you're actually interested in what people are doing and looking for opportunities to actually help them out. Okay, so let's say you either used your network or you did some direct outreach and talked to the recruiter or the hiring manager. Now what? How do you actually impress them and show them that you are going to be valuable for their company? AI, which is of course the biggest and most important skill that you can have nowadays. But first, I just wanna make sure that you nail the basics when it comes to the resume and the interview prep because no matter where you apply, that's gonna be super important. And then AI is gonna help you take it over the top. Because the third secret is that your success in getting a job is gonna depend on doing a lot of small things right. All of these little factors are gonna compound to have a really big impact. So let's do a quick lightning round of all the things that you wanna get right. For resumes, make it one page, just make it one page. Grammatically correct, nice and neat. Clear and concise is a lot better than densely packed. Add a brief intro to really show how you stand out from the crowd, especially if you can apply it to the company that you're applying for. Highlight your tech skills, any relevant experience, and any certificates or classes that you might have taken. And of course your degree if you do have one. Add personal projects. This is huge, especially for companies that are smaller, because hiring managers are going to want to see that you go above and beyond and that you can take initiative to actually make things happen. And personal projects really show that off well. If you have have the time, I highly recommend that you tune your resume to the actual job listing. Don't make things up, but definitely look at the job posting and make sure that when you have the opportunity, you can connect your experience with the things that they're looking for. Let's talk about what you should know. You gotta have some practical hands-on skills. Learn how a website works. What's the UI? What's the backend? What's an API? How do you connect to the database? How do you do authentication? These are the things that are gonna occupy like 90% of your tech job, whether you're a product manager, whether you're an engineer. At the end of the day, most of these apps are just taking data from somewhere, doing something to it, and displaying it to the user. Okay, let's keep going. Sure, do some lead code problems and get familiar with some algorithms, but don't go over the top. You don't need to spend like 12 hours a day grinding on this stuff, especially if you're focusing on companies that are gonna appreciate practical skills rather than memorizing algorithms. In addition to the technical skills, get a basic understanding of how businesses actually work and what the different teams within a business usually do, like sales, marketing, product management, engineering. Having this understanding is really gonna help the hiring manager see that you know what you're talking about. One of the most important non-technical skills that hiring managers are looking for are flexibility and creativity. How are you going to behave when you're given an ambiguous problem? Are you gonna rise up to the challenge and figure out how to solve it anyway? These are the sorts of people that we wanna have on our team. When it comes to the interview, be relatable, be upbeat, be a human being. Attitude really goes a long way to making you a preferred candidate. People wanna work with energy generators, not energy drainers. If you know who's gonna be interviewing you, look them up on LinkedIn and understand what they've done so you can ask interesting questions and be memorable in their mind. During the interview, show that you can think in trade-offs because this is a lot of what software engineers do. There's often not a perfect solution, but rather trade-offs that you gotta make. Admit when you don't know something. That's gonna get you a lot of respect and that's a problem that I see with a lot of junior engineers. Ask interesting questions. For everybody's sake, try to figure out if it's actually gonna be a good fit for you and for the company. And finally, don't be too pushy or apply too much pressure to the hiring manager because that can be off-putting. You have to find a balance between being engaging without being too demanding. Okay, lightning round over. Let's talk about AI. Here's the thing. Everybody's talking about and thinking about AI all of the time in all of these different tech jobs and non-tech jobs. So if you can master these skills, you can really show potential employers how valuable you can be. 
If you can bring ideas to the table on how they can use AI and how you can implement it for them in their business, they're gonna be really interested in actually hiring you. And if you take it a step further and you build something out that can demonstrate this for them, it's gonna be a no brainer. They wanna get ahead of the curve. They wanna have people who know the latest and greatest skills and people who have been able to master AI in a short time span they're showing off how flexible they are. They're showing off how ahead of the curve they are. And that's the kind of people that employers really want to be a part of their company. And the thing is, it can actually be pretty easy to figure out how to work with these AI tools and how to really put them into action. I have a bunch of different tutorials on that on my channel, so be sure to check that out if that's something that you're interested in. Practically speaking, if you identify certain companies that you're interested in working for and figure out ways to apply AI to their business and then directly outreach to the hiring manager or the recruiter and show them that you've done this research or that you put some kind of app together, this sort of initiative is gonna put you way ahead of a lot of the competition. And I know that it's gonna take time, but I truly think that this sort of approach will pay off and actually get you a job. Worst case, it's just something else to add to your resume and portfolio to show off to the other employers that you apply to. Okay, so my final tip is to land and expand. And this is a term that's often used in sales, which means that you sell a small deal to a customer and then once you've been able to prove some value, you expand that deal. And this is the sort of thing that I think you can actually do nowadays working for some of these smaller companies in a technical position. Because if you can get a job doing something relatively small and then be a part of the company and then start innovating and creating you know, AI powered tools that they can use or integrating AI into their products, you're gonna quickly show how valuable you are to the company and they're going to promote you. They're gonna give you salary increases or you'll be able to use all of this experience to leverage it into getting an even better role at a different company. If you're struggling to get a software engineering job, you might get a job as a data analyst or a business consultant and then start applying all of these different AI tools and prove your value within the company. Rather than waiting for the perfect role, I think it's a better strategy to just get started and start building some experience and some connections and then pivot alongside technology as it rapidly advances over the coming years. That means you might be doing coding as soon as you join, but then eventually as AI automates more of those tasks, you find yourself more in a product management position, but you're already part of the company and you already understand the business objective. So your job is gonna be a lot more secure and you're gonna be able to add a lot more value to the company because you understand how these things work. Okay, so if you wanna build some cool AI stuff but you're not sure where to start, check out these videos which will explain some of the most important new tools that are available and how you can use them. I'll see you there. Take care.